In this video, we're going to learn about something called the geometric mean and that how that relates to ratios and right triangles. So the geometric mean, also known as the mean proportional, so let me go ahead and just write geometric mean or the mean proportional is whenever you have um, two means of a proportion that are equal, then the mean is called the mean proportional. So what that looks like is in this proportion, 2 over 8 equals 8 over 32. 8 is considered the mean proportional between 2 and 32 because 8 is equal to itself. So in this first example, if I say find the mean proportional between 8 and 12, I'm looking for that repeated number. So I'm looking for, um, in this case, where the 8 was. So what's going to happen is I'm going to set up a proportion. Let me give myself a little bit more space here. So I have 8 and 12. I'm looking for the number that is the mean proportion between 8 and 12. So that means I'm looking for the repeated number, which is going to be, in this case, x. So once you see this, well, then it's just cross, multiply, and solve. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's the setup. That's what it means. Cross multiply. So we have x squared equals 8 times 12 equals 96. Let me just rewrite it up here. So x squared equals 96. We're going to go ahead and square root that. So x equals, technically it's plus or minus the square root of 96. In geometry, we usually only care about the positive number because we're dealing with a length or an angle measure. Um, so in this case, let's just keep the positive. So it's going to be positive square root of 96. And then it's a good habit to get into breaking these down into simplest radical form. So if I have the square root of 96, think about the biggest perfect square that goes into 96. So 16 times 6 gives me 96. 16 being a perfect square, so it's going to reduce down to 4 root 6. So that's the mean proportional between 8 and 12. So then the question is, well, how does this all relate to our similar triangles and in geometry? And what ends up happening is this geometric mean or the mean proportional occurs whenever we have this type of picture right here where we have a large right triangle. So triangle ABC is a right triangle with angle B being the right angle and an altitude is drawn. So whenever you um, have an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, you're going to have this geometric mean situation. So the altitude, if BD is the altitude, it means that it's perpendicular to side AC. So it means that there's right angles here as well. So now what you can see is that you end up having a large right triangle with two smaller right triangles within it. And why this all ends up working is because this small triangle is going to be similar to the big triangle. And this small right triangle is going to be similar to the big right triangle. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in class, but that's why all of this works. So before we get too far into um, the two geometric means we can set up, we need to label our triangle so that we're talking about consistent side lengths. So we have our big right triangle, which means that if angle B is the right angle, this side right here is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle, which means that these sides over here are considered our legs of the right triangle, and I'm going to call one leg one and one leg two just so that we know that they're two separate sides, not necessarily equal to each other. And then what's left here, this altitude, it splits side AC into two parts. So this part here I'm going to call part one since it shares um, trying the same triangle as leg one. And then I'm going to call this part two since it's in the same smaller triangle as leg two. So notice in these smaller right triangles that the legs are really the hypotenuses of the small triangles, but we call them the legs because we're referring to the big right triangle with the altitude drawn. So the altitude breaks up the hypotenuse into two parts. Everything else is with respect to the big right triangle. So 
if we look at this first um, statement here, it says the length of the altitude, so the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse is the geometric mean between the lengths of the other two segments of the hypotenuse. So what that means is the altitude, which I should actually label my picture too, here's my altitude. The altitude is the geometric mean between the two segments of the hypotenuse. So it's the um, geometric mean between the two parts. So if you think about what that's saying, the altitude would be right here. If it's the geometric mean between the lengths of the two parts. So it would look like this, part one and part two. So there's our first proportion. And again, this is true because of the triangles being similar. Um, so this, to kind of help us remember that, instead of saying the sentence, we have an acronym that we call PAP, which stands for exactly that. It stands for part one over the altitude equals the altitude over part two. So it's also called the altitude rule because it has the altitude is the geometric mean between those other two segments. Um, but that's the way to remember it is using this acronym to kind of help you. So then the other situation we have is the length of each leg. So the leg of the right triangle is the geometric mean between the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the segment adjacent to that leg. So what that means is when we go to set up our proportion, if I say, let's just say leg one, so leg one and leg one, if we have that there, well then that's the geometric mean between the length of the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse, and the length of the segment that's adjacent to that leg. So it'd be part one because it's got to be the one next to leg one. So there's one setup, but I could also take this and I could apply it to um, leg two and part two. So if I wanted to, I could say, okay, well, using leg two, that's the geometric mean between the hypotenuse and the part of the hypotenuse next to that leg. So it would be part two. So regardless, here's your proportion. The, the way that we remember this is we call it HILP. So H-L-L-P stands for hypotenuse over leg equals leg over part. And just know that the part and the leg have to be belonging to the same small triangle. So they're the ones that are adjacent to each other. So let's go ahead and apply this. So it's basically going to end up being more proportions. Um, it's just now you have some acronyms to kind of help you set up the proportions because it's not as easy just to um, remember how to set them up without using these acronyms. So whenever you have a picture where you have a big right triangle with an altitude drawn, you should be thinking PAP or HILP. So what you want to do to distinguish between are you going to use PAP or HILP, I always say check the altitude. So if I look at, here's my big right triangle, I'm thinking PAP or HILP. And what I do is I look at the altitude. So here's the altitude. There's something on the altitude. So since there's something on the altitude, whether it's a number or it's an X, that indicates you're going to be using the altitude rule. You're going to be using PAP. So that means I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up PAP. So it means it's going to be part over altitude equals altitude over part. So part one, part two. So when I look at it in my picture, this is the altitude. This is part one. This is going to be part two. So then we just plug in. So part one is X. Altitude is 10. Repeat that because that's the geometric mean between the other two. And then X plus 21. And then we go ahead and we cross multiply. So the cross multiplication isn't anything new. So it's going to be X times X plus 21 equals 100. And hopefully you're thinking I have to factor this. Or I'm going to end up having to factor because when I distribute this X through I end up with X squared plus 21X equals a number. So I need to get zero on one side here so that I can set this up for factoring. 
or you could use quadratic formula if you wanted or completing the square lots of options and when I go to do my factors it's going to be x and x two sets of parentheses I'm trying to add to 21 and I'm trying to multiply to a negative so you're multiplying to a negative so it means you're going to have a positive and a negative and when you multiply to negative 100 the numbers I'm thinking about are 25 and 4 to get to 100 um, one of them being negative but the bigger number is going to have to be positive so that I add to a positive 21 so positive 25 negative 4 are my numbers that work they multiply to negative 100 and add to 21 split that up so I have x plus 25 equals 0 x minus 4 equals 0 and finish it off so I end up with x equals 25 and x equals 4 since it's geometry look back at your picture and figure out what these x's represent so x represents the side length um, so x has to be positive so we're going to reject this one and our answer is going to be x equals 4 and keep in mind the question said solve for x so I'm not going to plug back in I'm just going to keep it as x equals 4 so there's the first one let's look at one more together so I look at this picture, I see it's a right triangle with an altitude drawn, so I'm automatically thinking cap or hill for this scenario. I look at the altitude, and I don't see anything there. There's nothing there. So since there's nothing there, it means I'm going to be using hill. So we're not going to be using cap. So that means we're going to be doing hypotenuse over leg equals leg over part. So hypotenuse here is 12. Let me label these. So this is the hypotenuse. This is part of the hypotenuse. And this is the leg. And remember, we always want the leg and the part that are next to each other. I always kind of make that circle the two and make it look like a smiley face. That's the way I kind of remember it. They have to be next to each other. So we have our hypotenuse is 12. The leg is going to be 6. The leg, again, is 6 over the part, which is x. Again, you should see that repeated number or expression in your diagonal because that is the geometric mean between the 12 and the x. So that's why that's repeated. It'll always be repeated. And then from here, go ahead and cross multiply. So we have 12x equals 36. Nice and easy to solve this one. Divide both sides by 12. We get x equals 3. And that's it. it. said solve for x, and we've done it. So go ahead and do your um, check your understanding problems, get down your key ideas, and make sure when you're doing your check your understanding problems, you're thinking cap versus hilt. If you see a picture where you have a big right triangle and an altitude drawn, remember pap means that you have something on the altitude. You're going to be using the altitude. That indicates pap. Otherwise, you're going to be going with hilt. So go ahead, try those, and we will talk about those tomorrow.